Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and when I'm trying to decide if a car is good or not, I try to hone in and evaluate on three main aspects. First of all, how is the car to drive? That's very important to me. I am a, a driving enthusiast first and foremost, and I love to be behind the wheel, and that doesn't mean it has to be a sports car, I just mean uh, when you're driving, is it is it particularly easy to drive? Is it particularly smooth? Is it engaging? Whatever whatever uh, sort of driving experience I'm looking for, how is it? Secondly, how would it be to own? So yes, we typically only spend a week with these vehicles, but uh, based on evidence from the manufacturer, from other vehicles they've made, maybe our previous ownership experiences, what would it be like to own the vehicle? Or maybe it's a hydrogen vehicle, for example. That wouldn't be very easy to own because you'd have to be filling it up with hydrogen regularly. So what would the ownership experience be like? We consider that. And lastly, how well does the vehicle perform its purpose? So that allows us to evaluate anything from a heavy duty truck to a two wheeled motorcycle how well uh, does it perform what it's supposed to do? Now, when taking those three aspects and looking at the new 2024 Toyota Crown, I'm impressed. I really, really am because, as we'll see here in a moment, this car is excellent to drive. It's very solid, it's very smooth, it's quiet, the approach angles are large enough that even driving around Southern California here, I've been able to uh, get in and out of parking lots and driveways without any sort of scrapage. It's all wheel drive to make it easier to uh, drive in various weather sort of situations. It's very easy to get in and out of, especially for a sedan. It gets good fuel economy and the, uh, the interior layout and accommodations are nice. For the ownership experience, Again, it's going to be very easy and straightforward. It's a Toyota. And not only is it a Toyota, but it's a Toyota built in Japan. And it's a sedan, so it's fuel efficient. Again, that ownership experience is going to be light on your wallet. Plenty of Toyota dealerships around. It's a good amount of space inside, so if you need to take adults, there's room back there. If you need to put things in it, there's room back there as well in the trunk. In fact, let's just show you that real quick while we're in here, while we're back here. Sedan style trunk space there. And again, ownership experience full-size spare tire or is it well it's a temporary right yeah it's a temporary spare but at least it's a, a 21 and look at that all your tools right there very easy to get to to replace the tire as well seats that fold so you can put bigger things in it and let's take a look at that rear seat room five foot ten adult here i will point out the doors don't open super wide so if you're planning on putting rear facing car seats in there that might get a little tough but being a sedan, but on a little bit more of an SUV-like platform, it's not super low, so I don't have to really dip down too far to get into here, and I can sit nice and upright at 5'10". Seat's got a decent amount of recline to it, and a little bit of center armrest action that folds down. It's kind of strange that that's covered, but I've got air vents back here and two power points. Heated seats as well in this limited trim. Closing that, we've got soft touch pretty much everywhere. Nice place to be. So the ownership experience is gonna be nice. And then, how well does it execute its purpose? For me, this crown is an interesting replacement to the Toyota Avalon. The Avalon was always a bit of a tough sell for me because it didn't feel different enough from the Camry. It was essentially just a little bit larger Camry, slightly nicer, but also not nice enough to intrude on the Lexus ES. And the crown is, it, it does fit a similar role there. It's, it's a larger, than the Camry and it's nicer than the Camry and not quite as nice as the Lexus ES or well now the Lexus GS is gone um, so it's 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 still kind of fitting into that segment but it does a better job at that because it doesn't just look and feel like a Camry the way the Avalon did this is a very different sort of vehicle it looks striking it's uh it's bigger and easier to get into and to live with and it's got a lot going for it so for me the the the, the purpose of this vehicle is I it's a big, comfortable, easy to live with sedan. And as more and more manufacturers are leaving that market space, the Toyota Crown is going to be able to take up those people who are looking for that. I keep coming to the idea of the Ford Taurus when I think of how I evaluate this car. And, and my grandmother actually comes to mind because she owned a few Ford Tauruses and now is in a Lincoln MKZ, but she doesn't like how small the MKZ is. And now that Lincoln and Ford don't make any sedans anymore, she's gonna need to get something here at some point, but she doesn't like the idea. She's a small woman. She doesn't want an SUV. She still wants a sedan, but she wants a larger sedan. 
I think this might be the ticket for it. It's got all-wheel drive. She lives in a snowy part of northern Michigan. It's easy to get in and out of. Good ground clearance. Good amount of room. She's got a dog. It's a hybrid. It's going to get good fuel economy, and it's going to be super reliable for her. So without any further yapping, let's hop on the road and talk about why I am going to be sad to give this Toyota Crown up at the end of this week. Getting into the cockpit, even Alyssa, my wife, commented on how it's a nice interior in here. It's a good blend between utilitarian, functional, and still attractive. You got a little bit of this bronze plastic accenting going on. As I said, a lot of soft touch materials. I'm a bit disappointed in the piano black, shiny aspects of this plastic here, but at least you don't have to touch it as much as something like the Mazda that we just recently reviewed. So it might keep it a little bit from getting scraped up. You've got a dual action center console lid here that allows either the driver or passenger to open it, which I find a little bit over-engineered, but you know, it does have a good amount of space in it. Physical controls for climate, I love that. Physical volume knob and a large, oh, if I remember correctly, 12.3 inch infotainment screen. Check the link below if you'd like to see our infotainment breakdown or our dedicated review of the 11 speaker JBL sound system, which is one of the few weak points of the Crown. I'm a little disappointed in that one. This one you're looking at here is the mid-level limited trim. Show them window sticker right here, about $50,000. And I do think it's a sweet spot for this car because yes, you can get a more powerful powertrain with this one. It's gonna give you a, a good amount of power. It's gonna make it really feel peppy, but your fuel economy is gonna drop quite a bit. And never once while I was driving the Crown this week did I feel like I needed to have that extra power. I mean, sure, more power is always cool, but depending on the ethos of the car and, and how you plan on driving it, uh, that that kind of dictates how much power you're regularly going to use. And for me, first of all, uh, one touch up and down windows all around, definitely like that. For me, the Toyota Crown is by and large a relaxed driving experience. So I don't feel the need to get up to speed super fast or, or be, um, merging really quickly or doing any sort of aggressive driving and I've just been putzing around with this two and a half liter hybrid setup and getting excellent fuel economy 35.5 mpg right now for my mixed number and on our highway fuel economy test we did a little bit better than that even I'd say the only downside of the powertrain is the fact that you do have to really listen to it sing in order to get up to speed and some people aren't gonna really love that. This two and a half liter from Toyota is very efficient, but it isn't the most refined. It's definitely better in this Japan-built crown than it is in something like a basic RAV4 hybrid or really just a normal RAV4. You can see it's a 2.5 as well, but it, I, I, the platinum trim with the iForce Max would be a more refined feeling and sounding powertrain, and you wouldn't have to wring the engine out as much to get that full power, but I still think this is the way to go. I've spent a good amount of seat time in the Crown this week, and the whole time I've been comfortable, the ergonomics are nice. At this price point, I would start to like to see things like power adjusted steering column and camera rear view mirror, but I wouldn't be surprised if those are things you get in the platinum trim, and I know they have to save a little money somehow because this still isn't exactly a cheap vehicle. You're looking at about $50,000 for this Crown. We'll talk about that a little more at the end, but that is one of the few reasons that I would have pause picking one of these up. What really stands out with this time I've spent with the Crown is good execution. There are a lot of features you can read on a spec sheet or a comparison chart from vehicle to vehicle. And some people might be looking at something like a Crown compared to a competitor and think, oh, well, uh, you know, this competitor, I can get X, Y, and Z features for less money. Or if I step up to this one, then for about the same price, I'm getting these extra features. But with the Toyota, it's not only getting the features, it's the good execution of those features. For example, driving around uh, over this weekend and it was kind of warm out and Alyssa got in the vehicle, she was warm, she got in, and as we got going, she pressed the cooled seat. And all of a sudden, it was immediate. She felt the cooled seat blasting her and she goes, oh wow, that feels excellent. And she has cooled seats in her Chevy Bolt, but that's more of a car that, yeah, it has the, the features on the spec sheet, they don't all work super well. In this car, when you've got a cooled seat, it's venting you hard. I mean, it's really uh, significant and, and impactful. So anything in here, the, when you have it, it's gonna work really well. And that's something you're paying a little bit extra for in something like this Crown. Look at this Boy Racer Civic, oh man. 
I mean, at least it's a Type R. Hey, those wheels are kind of cool. In fact, good on him for getting some smaller wheels. I, I think they're smaller. Oh, goodness. That 10th Gen Civic Type R is a silly car for me. The Crown was a good curiosity for me because we don't often get entirely new model lines here in the United States. Most of the cars I review are either refreshed or it's a new generation, but it's, it's a model that's been around. So to get into something that's entirely new for the U.S. market is, it's refreshing and uh, it allows me to really kind of start from a, a ground zero on my impressions. And the Crown is not exactly something making huge waves in the automotive market space. And some people are going to have their opinions about, oh, it costs too much or it's too bland or it's too boring or you got to step up to the, the platinum model to get anything, anything interesting. But I am a firm believer that there's a strong, silent majority that just wants simple, straightforward, easy to use, reliable, broadly compatible transportation like this. And they're not necessarily getting their needs met by a lot of manufacturers anymore on the market. I mean, larger sedans are going away and yet there are still people who are interested in them. And just because that number might be decreasing, that doesn't mean that they aren't still interested in this product. So Toyota stepped in and they said, hey, we've got you. Here it is. If you want it, buy it. And for a lot of people, I think it would serve them well. Recently, I got to review a different sedan, the Mazda 3, and I quite liked that car as well. But in that review, I said, I don't think the all-wheel drive, I didn't quite say it's not necessary, but I didn't think it should be standard with the turbo powertrain. I thought, most people buying a compact sedan like that really aren't going to care for all-wheel drive. It's, it's unnecessary to force that in. This car, I think it makes more sense because you're dealing with a larger vehicle, you're dealing with a more expensive vehicle, a higher feature set, and a different market segment that they're probably more willing to just pay and, and just get a car that's going to make them feel more confident in more driving situations. So at that point, why not? Yeah, give them standard all-wheel drive. And I think it's smart for Toyota to just make standard hybrid as well. It, it makes the entire lineup more efficient and it, it, it allows them to just focus on making, well, in this case, two different powertrains good versus having to have more options and more dealer confusion and more consumer confusion and uh, more powertrains that are less optimized. And while I have really enjoyed driving the Crown around this week, that's not to say there haven't been some things that have bothered me. One of them, this car is filled to the gills with safety features, and I'm a big proponent of safety features. However, some of them in the newer Toyotas do get downright intrusive and obnoxious. One of them in this car being the driver monitor system. Yesterday, Alyssa and I were driving around Orange County here looking at potential properties to rent, and whenever I was looking out the window, the car would beep at me saying, hey, driver, you're not paying attention, and, and she, Every time that would happen, she'd say, hey, you know, what's wrong with the car? I said, oh, it's, it's just mad at me for looking out the window. And okay, yes, maybe should I have had my, my eyes facing forward a little bit more? Yeah, debatable, but sometimes we're driving 15 miles per hour or so down a, down a slow street, and I'm, I'm kind of looking around, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find an address or something, and the car's beeping at me. And that's not to say that the car was necessarily in the wrong, but the problem is if it keeps beeping too regularly, then you end up getting desensitized to the beeps. And then when it is really a, a situation in which you're not paying attention, you're less likely to uh, pick up on and be concerned by that notification. Another good example is the car has front cross traffic alert. So as you're pulling out onto a street, if there's traffic coming by, it beeps at you. And again, that's, that's good and helpful. If you don't notice a car coming, it's good to have a beep at you. But you, you regularly are pulling out on the streets where there's traffic coming by. I mean, you, you're coming out of your driveway and you're looking, or you're, you're coming out of a shopping center and you're looking. So it's, it's a fairly normal uh, driving experience to have to be watching for traffic. So if, again, if the car is making a beep at you every time traffic is coming by, then you start becoming desensitized because you think, oh yeah, it's, it's very normal. And then if it's a situation in which you're actually not paying attention or there is an emergency that the car should be alerting you of, you might miss it. Next, as I said earlier, the JBL sound system is in this weird situation in which it sounds more like a standard JBL sound system for a $40,000 Toyota and not a $50,000 kind of near luxury-ish type of car. So yeah, you're getting the refinement of a luxury vehicle here in the Crown, but you're not getting the sound system performance. 
and it's disappointing that we're not getting a little bit better mixed system at this price. There's a good example right there of how I can pull into a parking lot even with a big dip and a lot of sedans are gonna scrape right there, not the Crown. And lastly, at $50,000, you are starting to get into a bit of a weird point of, yeah, you could spend a little more money and get yourself into a full-on luxury vehicle, or you could spend a little less money and, and have yourself into something also very nice like the new Camry or the new Accord. But I do think because the, the set of people who are interested in the Crown is going to be fairly low to begin with, those people who would be best served by the Crown are going to be willing to pay the money in order to get into this vehicle. Whether it's because of the styling, the way it drives, the all-wheel drive, the hybrid aspect, whatever it is, if they want it, I think the people will pay for it. And we've been seeing a lot of products get expensive from Toyota recently, and I suspect they're just getting ahead of the market, trying to clamp down on dealer markups, so the dealer's gonna just ask MSRP. Maybe the invoice pricing is, is, is lower so that the, the dealer holdback is greater and they're able to make more money. I don't know, but this certainly isn't the first Toyota product we've seen really be jacked up in price recently. Now, before we wrap up, we're gonna throw the car on the Daily Motor leaderboard. Let's get the list out here and see where we're at. Current leaders right now are the Kia EV9, Hyundai Ioniq 6, and Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. Where is the crown going? I, I know where it's going. This one's pretty easy for me. We're going up into fifth place in front of the Prius and below the Mazda 3. I, I That's not to say this... I enjoyed my time driving this more than the Mazda 3, and I think for the right buyer, the Mazda 3's, or this is going to be better than the Mazda 3, but the Mazda 3 as a general lineup, the fact you can get into one for about $30,000 and still have such a nice experience, it's just a little bit more of a compelling product for me. So there it is, Toyota's new crown. Not for everybody, very interesting, but for the right buyer, a very well executed product. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the Crown, check the link below. We've got the fuel economy test, the members only sound test, the normal sound test, and the infotainment test. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.